Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The Eric Erickson Show across the nation. Glad to have you with me. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, always happy to have you here. Well, We got a problem, but it's not really our problem. (laughs) Um, You know, the Democrats are really focused on this Kansas abortion thing. If you listen to a lot of Democrats, the only thing that matters is the Kansas abortion vote that, I mean, they're really extrapolating from it things that aren't there. Uh, and what they're, they're they're doing is they're ignoring a meeting street insights poll for the congressional leadership fund. Now, uh, full disclosure going into this, uh, congressional leadership fund is a Republican super PAC. But the Republican super PAC congressional leadership fund puts money into races in which their polling suggests they might have a chance. So the Congressional Leadership Fund, unlike a lot of outside uh, super PACs, it's got to do really good polling. So, for example, there's a a Center Street PAC in Pennsylvania that has Dr. Oz getting blown out of the water by Fetterman, the Democrat, by about 10 points. And uh, they won't release everything with the poll. And the group is an outside, uh, supposedly independent group. And it doesn't seem to be even driving Democratic interest, uh, which you can tell means that no one really believes the credibility of the poll. Everybody's freaked out by the Congressional Leadership Fund poll that they've released. And the reason is because, and again, you've got to understand this, every partisan poll that is released is designed to drive a story. You have to then ask yourself, how credible is it? And one of the big tip-offs is, is the group that released the poll matching what their poll shows with their actions? So if the Congressional Leadership Fund is beginning to pour money into a race, after its poll shows that that race is winnable, then they probably believe their own polling and it's not just a PR stunt. So how bad have things gotten for the Democrats? In a district that Joe Biden won by 15 points, a congressional leadership poll in Colorado shows their candidate, the Democrats' candidate, is only up by two points. It's an open seat. This is Democrat Brittany Peterson. Uh, She is running against Republican Eric Adland. It's a 44-42 race within the margin of error in a mid-November survey conducted by the Congressional Leadership Fund. 13% are undecided. Now, this is a live caller survey, so it's not a robocall. It's not an online survey. This is a live operator, live caller, meaning it's a live person talking to a live person. 400 likely voters. That's the gold standard for polling in America. The margin of error is 4.9%. The generic ballot found the Democrat leading the Republican 45 to 44. This is from Politico. Now, I'm going to read you this. Open seats are increasingly posing a problem for Democrats, depriving them of well-known incumbents with large campaign accounts. This seat will be vacated by retiring Democrat Representative Ed Perlmutter. But Peterson, a state senator, had proven to be a stronger fundraiser than Adland, a combat veteran. She raised $750,000 to Adland's $141,000. The contrast, according to Democrats, uh, between Democrats and Republicans in Colorado's two competitive House districts could not be more clear. Voters want proven leadership, not culture warriors looking to take Colorado backwards. Republicans are contesting uh, the 8th district in Denver's northern suburbs. That district also shows 
the Democrat or the Republican leading the Democrat by eight points. That's a Democratic polling group that found this. The Republican is leading the Democrat by eight points, 44 to 36. Biden won that district by five points. This is a problem for the Democrats. Colorado also has Michael Bennett up for reelection. Michael Bennett is uh, the Democratic senator. And he's got a strong Republican challenger in Colorado. Colorado continues at the federal level to be more swingy than it is at the state level. The state level, Colorado, kind of Democrat. The federal level, it's a little more of an independent streak. And it's willing to go Republican. And you've got a Republican now who is competitive at the Senate level. And here in the two swing districts of Colorado... Colorado, remember, has a nonpartisan commission that drew its district lines. And one of these seats was designed to be a Democrat seat. And in the seat that was designed to be a Democrat seat where Joe Biden won by 15 points, the Republican and the Democrat are tied. In the seat where Joe Biden won by five points, Designed to be a swing seat, the Republican is eight points ahead, according to the Democrats polling. That's a problem for the Democrats. The Democrats have more open seats this time than the Republicans. In fact, the Democrats have more open seats now than the Republicans had in 2018 when the Democrats took back Congress. And it looks like the default for a lot of voters with these open seats is they're going Republican. They're not blaming Republicans for Donald Trump, who they may not like. But they are backing Republicans. This is something the media hasn't really wanted to pay attention to. I I really, the more I, I pay attention to what's going on in the press right now, it really does seem to me that the press is more than they're lying to you and me. They're lying to themselves about the state of things. Every good news for Joe Biden is played up. I mean, just consider this, consider this. Joe Biden recovered from COVID before a rebound. The New York times and Politico, and Reuters, several other outlets, all ran stories when Joe Biden came out of um, COVID. They all rushed out stories and said, the wind is at Joe Biden's back now. Look at all the wins he's getting in Congress. Most of these aren't wins he's getting in Congress. He's getting them in the House. They're not going to make it through the Senate. But they're all like, look at this, look at this. The wind is it, it's in the sails. Joe Biden, full steam ahead now. He's rebounding. Really? Is he really rebounding? And then he got COVID again. And notice how they've downplayed the rebound of COVID. Look at the Kansas situation. In Kansas, the Democrats ecstatic. They saved abortion in Kansas, but they don't want to pay attention to the ancillary details that suggest it's not quite what it seems, including a massive Republican turnout in the primaries there and some very good candidates for the general election. Do you know no incumbent governor in Kansas has won re-election when their party controlled the White House? Pretty good sign Kansas is not going to go different. They have a Democratic governor right now. They ran a deeply flawed gubernatorial candidate last time when Trump was president, and uh, the Republicans lost the governor's mansion in Kansas. Kansas is way more moderate than people think. Now look at this. There's a rebound in the polling for Joe Biden. It came very abruptly. The low water mark was July 21st. Joe Biden had an approval rating of 36.8%. He's gone up now to 39.5%. His disapproval went from 57.5%. His disapproval rating has now rebounded. It's 56.4% now. What's going on? Well, what's going on is 
the end of summer. I've been telling you this happens in Georgia, but it doesn't just happen in Georgia. It also happens in the, um, it happens every election season. So put it to you this point, this way, July 27th, July 27th of 2016, Donald Trump was ahead of Hillary Clinton in the polling average. And then by August 12th, Donald Trump, he had been at 45%. By August 12th, he was at, uh, or August 9th, he was at 39.9. Hillary Clinton at 47.8. She would get up to 48. And then by the end of August, would be at 48.4%. The same thing happened in 2018 with Brian Kemp and Stacey Abrams, and it happened a lot. At this time of year, suddenly Brian Kemp's polling cratered. It might just be something else. It might just be that the end of summer, the beginning of fall, Republicans aren't talking to pollsters. It could just be that. It could be, historically, that at the end of the summer and the beginning of the fall, Republicans are getting their kids ready for school. My kids start school on Friday. I don't know why they're starting on a Friday. It makes no sense to anybody. Um, the, the county that I live in, school started on Monday. Our kids go to a small Christian private school. It starts on Friday. Some of the other schools start back uh, the middle of the month. Of the Eastern Seaboard, uh, schooling starts in September. In the South, it tends to start in August. But parents, whether they start in September or they start now, they've been taking vacations with their kids. Parents, by the way, married couples with kids overwhelmingly vote Republican. They're not home to answer the pollster's call. And they're not, when they're on vacation, answering calls from numbers they don't recognize. So the pollsters aren't talking to them. They're not in their offices checking their emails for the online surveys. Every single election cycle, midterm and presidential, this happens at this time of year. You can see it for yourself. You don't have to believe me. There was the late July rebound for Hillary Clinton and the collapse for Donald Trump. There was the late July rebound for Stacey Abrams and collapse of Brian Kemp. There was the late Summer, early fall rebound in Georgia, I'm very familiar with. Nathan Deal collapsed and Jason Carter surged. David Perdue collapsed. Michelle Nunn surged in 2014, but you see it around the country. I'm most familiar with that because that's where I live. That's what I pay attention to. But you see it. You see it now with Joe Biden's polling. Late summer, early fall, the Democrats surge in the polling. And the media plays it up as something really, really big. But there's a problem when you look down at the local level. Go to a district in Colorado where Joe Biden won by 15 points. And in the mid-July polling, before people started checking out to go on vacation and get their kids back to school, in a district where Joe Biden was 15 points ahead in 2020, the Democrat is tied with the Republican. Why is all of this? Why, Why is it so? It's because people don't live their lives according to the cycles of when the pollster calls. If you're a Democrat, you're more likely to not have kids and be on vacation with them or getting them back to school. That's just the honest truth. Don't be insulted if you're a Democrat with kids. I'm talking about the generalities here. Pollsters deal in generalities and the statistics they can extrapolate from it. Republicans tend to go to church on Wednesday, so Wednesday polling doesn't look good for the GOP. Republicans at the late summer, early fall, they tend to go on vacation with their kids, so they're not talking to pollsters. Democrats always have a rebound at this time of year. And the Democrats in the media are taking these data points saying, oh, something's changed. All of a sudden, the the wind is at Joe Biden's back. Things have turned around. He's doing well. And then October comes. And the Republicans surge in the polls, just as Donald Trump did in October, right before the election, in the Real Clear Politics polling average. And just as they will do again this year, just as Brian Kemp did in 2018 against Stacey Abrams, where he ultimately won. You got to remember, the late summer and the early fall has a bias against Republicans because they're on vacation. They're not talking to pollsters. The people most likely to talk to pollsters, even the Republican ones, tend to be the ones who lean left socially and are more inclined to vote Democrat. And then it all settles back into fashion by October. 
everybody asked me about bowl and branch sheets. I actually put up a picture the other day. We got some at our house because we order from them. We actually are customers. They're like, oh my gosh, are they really that good? Yes, they get softer every single time you wash them. I mean, they use 100% organic cotton threads. They're super soft. You get such a good sleep. They have just the great weight to them. Like I had a pair of sheets we actually threw away when we replaced them with Bowl and Branch, where is they were just like too light and also not very soft. The Bowl and Branch, they're perfect. The drape across your body when you sleep, absolutely perfect. Bowl and Branch uses the highest quality threads on earth for superior softness, for a better night's sleep. They've got over 10,000 stellar reviews. Their signature sheets come in nine neutral colors in all sizes from twin to California King. You will feel the difference. And they're 100% free from toxins. No pesticides, no formaldehyde, no harsh chemicals. Get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use promo code ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, at BolandBranch.com. That's BolandBranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch.com. The promo code is ERIC, E-R-I-C-K. Welcome back. It's Eric Erickson here. And as JJ said, the voice for the program, you can uh, text the word show to 33777. You will get all the podcast links, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, Apple uh, podcast app, uh, the general feed. You'll get the 24-7 live stream. You can listen to my show. Uh, it, it takes me live noon to three and then repeats until the next day at noon. You can get that. Uh, and you can also subscribe to the daily email where you get my Substack. You get all of my show notes for the show, you get my exclusive interviews, you'll get discounts for our conferences, all sorts of that. Uh, if you just text the word show to 33777, I'm going to go to the phones now. If you want to be on the program, you call 877-973-ERIC, E-R-I-C-K. That's 877-973-7425. You can be on the program and Lewis is on the phone. I want to go to you. Welcome to the show. Hey, Eric. Uh, you had mentioned that topic about the 13-year-old girl and the visa issue and the Pornhub thing. My, my question is, is what is what difference is that in the Epstein Island thing? And I want to add something. I don't know if this is true, but it's speculated that Meghan Merkel who is now married to Harry, Prince Harry, may have been one of the girls on Epstein Island. I don't know if that's yeah, true, but that's I, what I heard. I, I, that, yeah, that that's. I, I see some malicious souls on on the internet uh, saying stuff like that. I, I have a hard time believing that one myself. Um, <laughs> it's one of those. Be careful what you read on the internet. The difference here, though, and this is this is interesting, is so this young lady who's suing Pornhub's parents uh, and suing Visa, she had the gumption to do it. The problem, and I've talked to a number of reporters who have followed the Epstein case, is a lot of the people who engaged in the trafficking, they paid lots of money to the victims to keep them quiet so they can't talk to reporters. And they're not going proactively to prosecutors to talk to prosecutors because they got all this money. So the billionaires have essentially uh, covered themselves up. I, I personally thought, you know, a couple weeks ago, as, as we figured out how monkeypox was spreading, man, can you imagine if one of the girls in Epstein's care had monkeypox, we would have a global heat map of all of the billionaire sex predators in the in the world as they all got monkeypox. Um it just it's it's an awful situation. It is stunning that Ghislaine Maxwell is going to prison for trafficking girls essentially to no one because they're they're, they're not prosecuting anybody here. They may be building some cases, but you also have to understand we are talking about some of the richest, most powerful people on planet Earth. I was talking to a reporter who is just furious at the uh, number of academic and nonprofit institutions normalizing Bill Gates with his money, given his ties to Epstein. And essentially the reporter says everyone from Bill Clinton to uh, to Bill Gates, who was around Jeffrey Epstein, had to have seen him have underage girls in his care, had to have seen the way he treated them, and they didn't say anything. He said the, the odds that one of these guys who was around Epstein as much as they were didn't see it is, is it's nonsense to, th to think otherwise. 
but you can't write too much about it and say too much about it because they've got billions of dollars and you don't, and they can sue you, maliciously sue you, and there's not a lot you can do about it except go bankrupt because their lawyers will beat your lawyers into the ground over time. So it takes prosecutors, and if they've paid off the girls and the girls don't come forward and acknowledge what happened, there's nothing they can do to prosecute. Rich people get away with stuff the rest of us don't. We see that with the Hunter Biden situation too. The rich and powerful, there's a double standard, but you know what? It's why I sleep well at night with the doctrine of hell. They can escape justice in this world, but they will not escape justice ultimately uh, when it counts. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I, my friends, need to, well, I'm not, I started to say, (laughs) started to say, I'm going to bore you. I'm not going to bore you. But I'm going to talk about something that's not quite necessarily on the beaten path. I want to key up with a story here. Moms for Liberty. Moms for Liberty is a conservative group. They were founded in 2021 by parents and former school board members. Uh, agitating for parental rights. They've got a massive grassroots network of parents across the country. The organization uh, has been using PayPal. Many of their donors gave automatically through PayPal. Uh, But uh, Ron DeSantis spoke at their national summit on July 15th, and while he was speaking, Uh, They got an email, Moms for Liberty did, that PayPal was freezing their account. Uh, Wouldn't let them transfer money out. PayPal said they couldn't operate on the platform until the IRS approved the organization's 501c3 paperwork. Uh, But PayPal had already accepted the paperwork that they filed with the IRS. Uh, The IRS is going through a backlog right now of getting these done, and the procedure had tended to be that you go on and accept it uh, unless the IRS rejects it later. Well, Ron DeSantis heard about this, got involved, and announced he wanted legislation passed that prohibited people like PayPal from transmitting, from discriminating against customers for their religious, political, or social beliefs. Uh, and PayPal uh, got the hint and released the funds. Ron DeSantis standing up for this conservative group really made changes, but. This raises a larger issue, and we need to talk about uh, environmental, uh, social, and governance criteria, ESG. I bet you've heard about this in the news, and you may not be quite sure what ESG is. It is an idea conjured up by the left, and we need to explore this because it's time for the right to really fight back on this. BlackRock, the private equity group, and Vanguard, uh, the investment company, are two of the biggest left-wing agitators for it. My 401k with my company is run through Vanguard. Um, if if I had the clout to get them to get out of Vanguard and go to Fidelity or something, or Merrill Lynch or something, uh, I would, would push them because Vanguard – is screwing up a lot of businesses because Vanguard is one of the loudest agitators for ESG criteria in businesses. BlackRock, the private equity group, is another. So BlackRock itself, let me just give you this. BlackRock itself is not a major company, $800 million or so, maybe a few billion dollars in money. It's got a lot of billionaires who run it. But BlackRock controls, I have been told, about $10 trillion in assets. BlackRock controls more money than the federal government budgets for annually. BlackRock holds that money as the fiduciary for other people. Same with Vanguard. So when you invest in your 401k, you know, let's just, let's back up. Um, let's say you open a, a SoFi account or a Robin Hood account, a TD Ameritrade or Fidelity or Merrill Lynch account, and you buy stock. So I own, for example, Apple stock. Every year I get a, a notice from the board of directors that I've got, I get to vote. 
and there are shareholder resolutions on occasion and, and the company says vote no or yes or or what have you and the company tells me here's what we would like you to do we want you to reauthorize or add these new boards of, members of the board of directors we want you to vote against these shareholder resolutions we want you to vote for these things I dutifully cast my ballot if I want to show up at the shareholder meeting. I, I'm allowed to. Well, if you buy a four, if you get a 401k, uh, your 401k manager, Vanguard, BlackRock, whoever, they do that for you. And these groups, Vanguard, BlackRock, and some of the others, they're controlled by a bunch of highly, highly progressive liberals. And they came up with this idea of environmental social governance criteria. Now, one of the origins of ESG, you should understand, is anti-Semitism. The companies that engage in ESG were were inspired by anti-Semites who began pressuring companies to divest and boycott Israel. And they would pressure these people into... um, into stopping business with Israel. And they would go to shareholder meetings of companies and they would try to get them and they weren't very successful. But the progressive left got the idea. Look at these guys. We already control the assets for these other people. We can do it. And so BlackRock, Vanguard, and several other companies decided to start building environmental, social, and governance criteria for ethical behavior. So the environmental criteria considers how a company safeguards the environment. Climate change, what are their climate change plans? Social criteria, examine how their relationships with their employers, suppliers, customers, uh, communities. Do you have diversity, equity, and inclusion programs? Are you discriminating against white people or not? You better be discriminating against white people. And then the governance is all about the shareholder rights and and, uh, how they govern themselves. Do you give adequate money to left-wing causes? Does your company's political giving benefit the Democrats or not? If not, you're in trouble. That's what ESG is. It is a way to advance the Democratic Party and the left's cultural agenda. It is how they get companies to come out against pro-life measures. It is how they get their companies to start grooming children and funding the grooming of children. They use environmental, social, and governance criteria. And you should know if your retirement fund is managed by a group like BlackRock or Vanguard, you are allowing them to be the fiduciary uh, um, people in charge, and they pressure the companies to support these things. From uh, the radical climate agenda to grooming kids in schools and the like, all this stuff comes out of ESG. They fund left-wing causes. They fund left-wing cancers on society. And they control your money, and you can't stop them. If your 401k is controlled by one of these companies, they get to do it whether you want them to or not. There are steps conservatives can take. If you're in a state where... The governor appoints a treasurer, and it's really state treasurers have a lot of say in this. Or you're in a state that elects your state treasurer. Your state treasurer can say you're not allowed to make decisions related to politics and public policy. So all of these environmental, social, and governance criteria are based on politics and public policy. If you say... They're only allowed to make uh, decisions that make financial sense. Then suddenly they all go out the window. It makes more financial sense to increase the rate of return to the shareholder to go with oil instead of solar panels because oil is cheaper than than all the solar panel stuff. Your state legislatures can pass legislation that prohibits funds from the state retirement plan and pension funds from using ESG criteria. And so this is this is the key here. So BlackRock, for example, as I understand it, 
manages about $10 trillion in assets, and a lot of it is pension plans and government retirement funds and the like. So if your governor or your state treasurer or your legislature says you're not allowed to use ESG criteria or we have to take our money elsewhere, they are disincentivized from continuing to do it because at the, at the bottom line is Vanguard and BlackRock and the rest of them, they want to make a lot of money. And when you have big states, like take the state of Florida, for example, or the state of Texas, or even the state of Georgia, they have massive amounts of money where one of these companies has a fiduciary responsibility to the retirees in the state. Or take yourself. You live in a state where the state tells uh, the, the, these companies, uh, our citizens of our state want the best possible return on money. And your ESG criteria deprives them of the best possible return on money because you're using political and public policy points that are not tied directly to the financial benefit of the stock. Then suddenly they got to stop pushing the ESG stuff. They suddenly have to stop investing in the woke companies. It's a way to drive the wokes out of corporations. The wokes have taken ESG and Woko Haram used ESG to fund their terrorist regime around the country. The wokes use environmental, social, and governance criteria to fund their cancel culture. And they use Vanguard and BlackRock, chief among them, to advance their causes. So if you have state governments start telling BlackRock and Vanguard on behalf of our citizens, you're not allowed to use ESG criteria in deciding what companies to invest in or not. You're not allowed to promote uh, shareholder rebellions at companies to force them to go left. They can't do it anymore. They'll lose all their money. They make their money by being the good stewards, the fiduciaries of all this money. If the states start forcing them to give up the 401ks they control and the state retirement plans they control because of ESG, suddenly the wokes don't have the money to fund their operations. It's something we got to start thinking about on the right is standing up to the ESG criteria. The ESG criteria, the environmental, social, and governance criteria is how the wokes have captured corporate America. They get the fiduciaries, the vanguards of the Black Rocks who oversee your retirement funds to push it. They captured those companies and now they're capturing the corporate, corporate America. You get them to stop. You use the power of your governor, the power of your state treasurer, or the power of your legislature to pass laws that prohibit it. It's got to go away because otherwise these fiduciaries open themselves up to liability. It's not the Fortune 500 company that's suddenly liable in a lawsuit. It's the fiduciary who's not doing what the state said you got to do with our pension and retirement plans. It's time to start fighting back on this stuff. You worried about the wokes? This is the way to fight back. Look at education. You've got states like Texas and Florida that are now telling the textbook publishers, we are not buying your textbooks if it embraces the 1619 agenda. We are not buying your textbooks that embrace all of this radical empathy education nonsense that's just woke critical theory. And the publishers are having to cut this stuff out. They got to sell books to make money. They got to sell books. And if Texas and Florida and other states are saying, we're not buying these textbooks, they've gone woke. Well, you know, the woke stride, the woke slowly wove themselves into the textbook manufacturing situation of the publishers. And now suddenly you've got really big states, Texas in particular, buys more textbooks than any other state other than California. Disproportionately buys more than a lot of states combined. And it's saying, no, we're not buying these textbooks anymore. They've gone woke. The publishers have to scramble and get rid of them. Start doing the exact same thing when it comes to environmental, social, and governance criteria. Start passing laws or get state treasurers or governors to say you're not allowed to use ESG criteria to make your investment decisions. And if you do, you've breached the fiduciary trust of our citizens and we will sue you. And you will start seeing the wokes get out of corporate America. We got to fight back. This is an easy, legal way to do it without a lot of overhead. We've already got the people in place who can start fighting these fights for us. You know, and given the, the turmoil in the stock market that we're seeing right now, it's one reason a lot of people are going to precious metals because precious metals are precious metals. They're not woke. They're gold and they're silver. Gold and silver, they don't go woke. 
and they can actually help you in inflationary times like the Carter administration saw, like we're in right now. You may want to reach out to my friends at GoldCo if you got $50,000 or more in your IRA, your 401k, or other retirement savings. Call them, 855-904-5933. You'll get a free wealth protection kit to learn how to use gold and silver to protect and grow your money without having to involve the wokes in your funds. Thousands of retirees are protecting their government savings and many are getting $10,000 or more in free silver for doing it. So call my friends at Gold Co. 855-904-5933. Find out how you qualify for their special offer. They've helped thousands of Americans. They might be able to help you. If you just text my name, Eric, E-R-I-C-K, text it to 33777. I will... Uh, text you back their phone number. Text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777. I'll give you Gold Coast phone number, see if they're a good fit for you. Hello, welcome back. It's Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. If you want to call in and be a part of the program, very happy to have you. This is this is one of my ridiculous frustrations here. Um, Governor Newsom has declared a state of emergency regarding monkeypox in California. Uh, but y'all, um, they didn't cancel the kink festival in San Francisco. They made you cancel church, but they couldn't cancel the kink over monkeypox. Absolutely absurd double standards. Let's go to the phones here. John, you're going to be up next. Welcome to the program. Uh, bless your heart. I tell you what, you do a wonderful job. Thank uh, you. Yeah, your call screener let me in on that. <laughs> I don't want you to let this die about the ESG. Here's a simple reason. Um, when you, and you did a good job of this, but you mentioned DeSantis and some of the other, you know, the challenges about the financial, social governance. Mm-hmm. Um, recall, what did Justin Trudeau do to the truckers? Uh-huh. There were peacefully demonstrating or protesting how whatever word people want to use what did he do to them he locked them out of their account they could not get to their money that is exactly what this uh powers to be are trying to do control the money you will fall in line yeah, absolutely. It's what they do in China. It's what they do around the world. And interestingly enough, because of the laws in this country regarding private property, it is really hard for the government to do it here unless the wokes capture corporate America and the fiduciaries and does it for the left. Uh, and that's the thing yeah, I think yeah. a lot of people miss. A lot of people, they go, oh, the government wants to do X, Y, and Z in this country. Well, they, the government can't. And the government can't because they don't control the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court's not going to let them. Uh, the laws of states are different, and there are a lot of states where they can't. The federal government doesn't have plenary power under our structure. Even um, Sotomayor and Kagan would agree with that. But if you capture corporations and capture the fiduciaries like Vanguard and BlackRock, then you can make this stuff happen without the government ever intervening. And it's not the government doing it, so it's perfectly lawful. That's why you have to fight against ESG through your state government. That's why you need governors, state treasurers, and legislatures prohibiting investment decisions and activism based on ESG. You can do it. Uh, it, it's only a matter of time before Alec, the American Legislative Exchange Council, comes up with some model legislation on this. They were meeting in Atlanta this past week. I meant to talk about it then, um, but it's becoming a hot topic on the right, and it needs to be because it's very easy to stamp this stuff out with a conservative state legislature or a conservative governor and state treasurer in a state saying, absolutely not. You're not allowed to make decisions based on environmental, social, and governance criteria. It's only got to be based on fiduciary uh, financial interest to the shareholders, to the retirees. And then that becomes easy to sue them when they start making these stupid decisions that always cost more and prohibit companies from really exploding in growth. So fight back on this issue. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. 
Chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.